This is the Music History Today podcast for October 7th. On today's show, tragedy strikes at the Nova Music Festival, Broadway gets cats, and John Lennon gets to stay. First up, though, on this date in 1959, singer and actress Doris Day's movie with Rock Hudson, Pillow Talk, premiered and became a huge hit. In 1963, the Rolling Stones recorded their song, I Want to Be Your Man, which was written and given to them by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. In 1964, the Beatles appeared on the TV show Shindig on ABC television in America. In 1966, the Rolling Stones performed at Colston Hall in Bristol, England. Four of the songs that they performed became part of their live album, Got Live If You Want It. In 1967, the Beatles turned down $1 million to play at Shea Stadium for a second time after having sworn off doing live concerts. In 1968, Jose Feliciano played a rendition of the National Anthem during Game 5 of the World Series between the Detroit Tigers and the St. Louis Cardinals. The jazzy version of the song caused a lot of controversy, but it also started a tradition of artists giving the Star Spangled Banner their own artistic interpretation of the song. In 1975, after years of fighting a deportation order, John Lennon finally won the right to stay in America when the United States Court of Appeals overturned the deportation order. In 1977, Steve Hackett quit Genesis. In 1978, Country music legend Merle Haggard married his backup singer, Leona Williams. In 1980, Dusty Springfield performed for the first time in eight years when she performed at the Grand Finale Club in New York City. In 1981, the group The Time performed live for the first time. In 2003, Tears for Fears got back together. In 2004, Melissa Etheridge announced that she had breast cancer. She has since recovered. In 2005, Boy George was arrested for cocaine possession. In 2008, Spotify was started, first in Sweden and then, of course, mad takeover of the world. In 2016, the Desert Trip Festival started, which ran for two consecutive weekends. The festival made $160 million overall, making it the biggest grossing music festival ever, at least up to that point. In 2017, Nelly was arrested for the alleged rape of a college student in Washington, although no charges were ever filed in the case. And in 2023... Over 260 people were killed at the Nova Music Festival in Israel when Hamas gunmen attacked the festival during their attack on Israel. In classical music, in 1942, the second string quartet from Charles Ives premiered. And in 1954, opera singer Marian Anderson became the first African-American singer to perform with the New York Metropolitan Opera. In theater, in 1943, the musical One Touch of Venus opened on Broadway. In 1961, the musical Bye Bye Birdie closed on Broadway. In 1979, the musical 1940s Radio Show closed on Broadway. And also on that same day, the musical UB, based on the music of UB Blake, closed on Broadway. And in 1982, the musical Cats opened on Broadway, starting a run that ran well in excess of 6,000 shows. Albums that were released on October 7th include in 1963 when the Beach Boys released Little Deuce Coop, in 1977 XTC released 3D EP, in 1978 Dire Straits released their self-titled album and Heart released Dog and Butterfly. In 1981 Loverboy released Get Lucky which became a huge album at that time. In 1982, Supertramp released Famous Last Words. In 1983, John Cougar Mellencamp, as he was known back in the day, released Uh Uh-Huh. In 1985, Scylla Black released Surprisingly Scylla. In 1986, Slayer released Rain in Blood. And also on that same day, Talking Heads released True Stories. In 1987, Exodus released Pleasures of the Flesh. In 1993, Metal Church released Hanging in the Balance. In 1996, The Shaman released Hempton Manor. In 1997, Janet Jackson released The Velvet Rope, which became a huge album. Everclear released So Much for the Afterglow. Leonard Cohen released More of the Best of Leonard Cohen. Blondie released Picture This Live. Steve Earle released El Corazon. 
The Four Tops released their Ultimate Collection album, and R.E.M. released R.E.M. In the Attic Alternative Recordings, 1985 to 1989. In 2003, Government Mule released The Deepest End live in concert. Motley Crue released its 20th Century Masters, The Millennium Collection, The Best of Motley Crue. Jimmy Buffett released live in Auburn, Washington, and Styx released 21st Century Live. In 2006, Twisted Sister released their Christmas album, yes, you heard that right, a Christmas album called A Twisted Christmas. In 2008, Natalie Cole released her Christmas album called Caroling, Caroling, Christmas with Natalie Cole. Also on that same day, The Pretenders released Break Up the Concrete. In 2014, Weezer released Everything Will Be Alright in the End, and Jackson Brown released Standing in the Breach, and in 2016, Nora Jones released Little Broken Hearts. Singles that were released in the UK on October 7th include in 1966, when the Four Tops released Reach Out, I'll Be There, and the Moody Blues released Boulevard de la Madeleine. Meanwhile, in America. In 1963, Freddie and the Dreamers released I'm Telling You Now. In 1964, the Beef Eaters released Please Let Me Love You. In 1966, the Hollies released Stop, Stop, Stop. In 1969, the Jackson 5 released I Want You Back. And Bob Dylan released Tonight I'll Be Staying Here With You. In 1971, Michael Jackson released Got To Be There. And also on that same day, Hot Tuna released Been So Long. In 1974, Frank Zappa released Don't Eat the Yellow Snow. Always good advice. Barry Manilow released his debut single, Mandy. And Helen Reddy released her single, Angel Baby. In 1977, Queen released We Are the Champions. We Will Rock You was actually the B-side to that single. Then it all got put together and became what we now know as We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions back to back. In 2006, Pearl Jam released Gone. And in 2016, Bruno Mars released 24 Karat Magic, who went on to win multiple Grammy Awards. And Cinco, C-N-C-O, released the song Reggaeton Lento Bailamos. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 7th include Rock and Roll Hall of Famer John Mellencamp, record executive and producer Simon Cowell, cellist Yo-Yo Ma, singer Louis Capaldi, rapper Alicia Dixon, Tom York, the legendary Tom York of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, Radiohead. Singer Tony Braxton, Damian Kulash of OK Go, Taylor Hicks of American Idol fame, Leroy Thornhill of The Prodigy, drummer Tico Torres of Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, Bon Jovi, David Hope of Kansas, who should honestly be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but we'll leave that for another day. Singer Josh Levi, singer Lauren Platt, rapper Deluxe, Kevin Godley of 10CC and also the music video producing duo Godley and Cream, singer Al Martino, singer Ms. Teak, Colin Cooper of the Climax Blues Band, Tony Sylvester of Main Ingredient, Martin Murray of the Honeycombs, Dino Valenti of Quicksilver Messenger Service, and Stacey Dupree of Isley. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 7th include composer Cristobal de Morales, who passed away in 1553 at the age of 53. Organist André Chiron passed away in 1766 at the age of 71. Composer George Webb passed away in 1887 at the age of 84. Songwriter John Hewitt passed away in 1890 at the age of 89. Composer Samuel Warren passed away in 1915 at the age of 74. 
Musicologist Hubert Perry passed away in 1918 at the age of 70. Composer Hubert Main passed away in 1925 at the age of 86. Singer Mario Lanza passed away from heart issues in 1959 at the age of 38. Johnny Kidd of Johnny Kidd and the Pirates passed away in a car accident in 1966 at the age of 26. Singer and guitarist Smiley Lewis passed away from cancer in 1966 at the age of 46. Composer Herman Schroeder passed away in 1984 at the age of 80. Jazz singer Billy Daniels of the Billy Daniels Show passed away in 1988 at the age of 73. Ed Blackwell of the group Quartet passed away in 1992 at the age of 62. Composer Friedrich Zipp passed away in 1997 at the age of 83. Tuba player Arnold Jacobs passed away in 1998 at the age of 83. Country music singer Jimmy Lloyd passed away in 2001 at the age of 79. Composer Arthur Berger passed away in 2003 at the age of 91. Composer Mickey Matsubara passed away in 2004 from cancer in, at the age of 44. Singer Abraham Afawerki passed away when he drowned in 2006 at the age of 40. Keyboardist T. Lavitz of the group The Dixie Dregs passed away in 2010 at the age of 54. Jazz saxophonist Chi K. Chikai of the New York Art Quartet passed away in 2020 at the age of 76. Opera director Patrice Chereau passed away from cancer in 2013 at the age of 68. Singer Jimmy Beaumont of the Skyliners passed away in 2017 at the age of 76. Folk musician Rick Jones of the group Meal Ticket passed away in 2022 at the age of 97. And composer, and also Yoko Ono's first husband, Toshi Ishiyanagi, passed away in 2022 at the age of 89. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 8th, when in 1990, Eddie Vedder meets the rest of Pearl Jam, then known as Mookie Blaylock. <laughs> 